Welcome to my study where we're going to attempt to have our first virtual Sunday school class. Um, and we'd like to uh, zero in on what I consider to be the most important and distinctive doctrine uh, in the Bible. Anybody want to rise up and guess what that is? Well, I'll, let me give you a hint here. If you said the resurrection, you're correct. See, we have a risen Savior. Unlike all the other major religions of the world, uh, you can go to their uh, uh, tombs of their leaders, uh, and they're still there. But when we look into the tomb of Jesus, he's gone. Even uh, the opponents of Christianity, the Jews, um, testify to the fact that the body was gone. He was not in the tomb and could not be found. Um, now they have a different explanation for it. Uh, but as we look at the scriptures, uh, especially 1 Corinthians 15, where Paul spends a whole chapter uh, talking about um, the resurrection, we'll find out that here we have a historical event that's well documented and that can uh, be trusted. And so, uh, get your Bibles and let's uh, take a look at uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 15. Uh, before we uh, get into our study, uh, I'd like to recommend a, a couple uh, books. Uh, here's one by Gary Habermas, The Case for the Resurrection of Jesus. And he, uh, he zeroes in on all the historical uh, information that's out there condenses it into a understandable way uh, to help you understand uh, the, the resurrection and the uh, historical documentation that is out there. And the other, uh, there's a little booklet, um, A Lie by J. Warner Wallace, um, who was a former uh, Los Angeles uh, uh, detective. He solved uh, uh, cold cases, but uh, in there he um, he refers to Gary Habermas's book, and and in his little booklet here uh, condenses the there's four four things you, that you uh, need to keep in mind as we look at the resurrection. Uh, that um, almost all scholars, whether they're uh, believers or uh, skeptics uh, or or non-believers, they all accept uh, at least four. Uh, major historical facts um, about the resurrection. Um, that Jesus died on the cross and was buried. Um, Jesus' tomb was empty and no one ever produced his body. The disciples believed that they saw Jesus resurrected from the dead and uh, the disciples were transformed um, following the uh, their observation of the resurrection. So this is a good little uh, booklet that you can even give out as a tract to, to those who are um, wanting to investigate the truths of Christianity. Uh, and uh, many of them um, find the resurrection um, a stumbling block. Uh, and so uh, those two books uh, will really help you as a believer uh, be equipped to uh, to defend uh, the faith. And remember that's, Peter tells us, he says, be ready always to give an answer to those who ask you a reason of the hope. Uh, the reason there is a, a, a good um, thought uh, presentation of why you believe what you believe. And uh, those two booklets will, will definitely give you some of the uh, um, tools uh, that you can use um, to share with others uh, the truths uh, we find here in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. So let's take a look there and um, some of the things we uh, will see here are, are well documented and researched and talked about in the two books uh, that I just recommended to you. But um, let's start in verse, uh, first uh, two verses of chapter 15 in 1 Corinthians. Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I received, uh, per preached to you, which also you received and in which you stand, 
by which also you are saved, if you hold fast the word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you, first of all, that which also I received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So why, why do I think the uh, resurrection is one of the most important uh, doctrines in the scriptures? Um, well, first of all, as we see here, uh, Paul says the resurrection is one of the major parts of the gospel message that we preach and that he preached. He says Christ died, was buried, and rose again uh, the third day. And so that's what he preached, that's what they believed, and that's what they stand on. So the resurrection isn't just something we um, believe when we first become a Christian, but it's something that we can stand on and help us uh, in our growth uh, as a believer, and certainly a major truth that we can share with others. So it's not only a part of our uh, the gospel message of salvation, but it's also, he says, and this is what you stand on. This is what will help us stand and be uh, productive um, believers. And he says, um, this is something I delivered unto you um, from the scriptures. And so Paul is teaching them things that uh, he uh, had received. Uh, and this is pretty interesting because um, we know that he um, went to Jerusalem soon after he was saved and he spent 15 days with, with the uh, apostles, especially with uh, Peter. And it was there um, that we believe that he received, especially this early teaching uh, of, of Christianity that's been passed down um, throughout the ages. In fact, um, most Bible scholars believe that this, uh, this uh, uh, verse here, uh, that Christ died, uh, was buried, and rose again the third day, according to Scripture, was one of the first um, early creeds uh, that was... Uh, uh, passed uh, from generation to generation of, of the early Christians. So as uh, being part of the gospel message of salvation, it's an important truth that must be received uh, to even become a believer. Uh, look at uh, Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So uh, we, we see that the resurrection uh, as part of the gospel message is in, important um, in uh, our salvation. Uh, it's a truth that uh, must be received in the heart, must be believed in the heart um, to, to, become, to become a believer. So, uh, so that, that's pretty important. So we see this is what Paul preached. Uh, and as we look at the uh, Gospels and the uh, book of Acts, we see that this is the, uh, one of the main points that the apostles made in their preaching. When you read Acts chapter 2, Peter's uh, sermon there in the book of Acts, in chapter 2, chapter 4, um, we see Paul preaching in, in chapter 14 of Acts and 17 and when he was in Athens. Um, one of the focal points of their message was the resurrection of Christ. And they brought people to that place. Uh, to believe that they had to believe and they needed to understand that Christ died, that he was buried, but he didn't stay in the grave. He came out of the grave. He rose again. And so this, uh, this was a major point um, that was 
part of the early church and that uh, teaching of the apostles that was passed on to the uh, next generation as well. And so the resurrection is, is an important doctrine because it's part of the gospel. It must be received to become a Christian. And it was the focus of the uh, early church and the apostles and their preaching uh, was around the, re the resurrection. And notice uh, Paul says here, he says, uh, Christ died, was buried uh, according to the scriptures. Now, remember First Corinthians, for the Corinthians is probably one of the first uh, letters um, written, written very early, uh, even before some of the gospels. And so when he talks about according to the scriptures, he's referring to the Old Testament. Um, and so you ask yourself, well, what Old Testament scriptures uh, is is he referring to? Um, well, let's take a let's take a look at uh, Psalm sixteen. The Psalm sixteen verses um, nine and ten. Therefore, my heart is glad, and my glory rejoices. My flesh also will rest in hope, for you will not. Leave my soul in Sheol, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. And so uh, here in the Psalm 16, and we have uh, the Apostle Peter in his epistle documents this as well, that this is referring, um, and in his preaching, this is referring to uh, his resurrection. He would not see corruption because uh, he would not stay in the grave he would come up out of the grave um, which is not true this can't be speaking of david or anybody else in the old testament because they all died and their bodies were corrupted uh, you can go to the tomb of david um, and so this is not referring to them this is referring to the uh this is referring to the lord jesus Sorry, this uh, one of the hazards of uh, doing this from my uh, study. Uh, if I bump, uh, push something the wrong way, um, appreciate your uh, patience. Um, and it's a little harder than being in Sunday school class because I, I always look forward to uh, uh, your response. Um, but getting back to uh, to the scriptures here, he says, according to the scripture, so Psalm 16 um, predicts uh, the resurrection. All throughout the Old Testament, you have pictures, and I'm sure these are some of the things that Jesus referred to when he was talking to the uh, disciples on the road to Emmaus. He went to the Old Testament and showed them the things concerning him. And certainly he went to the, uh, the, to the picture there in um, Genesis 22, where, where Abraham is uh, going to sacrifice his son um, because we know from uh, Hebrews 11 that Abraham actually believed that uh, after he killed Isaac that God was going to raise him from the dead remember he said to the people that to the uh, those that went with him to mount uh, to the mountain he says uh, you stay here and Isaac and I will go and both of us will return and so he knew that he was uh, God was going to have him kill his son it, there, and so he, in his heart, believed uh, in the, that God would resurrect him from the dead. Pretty uh, interesting. Uh, so certainly that's one of the events. And um, in other pictures, the uh, Jesus himself refers to the um, to Jonah uh, being three days, three nights in the belly of the whale. Um, that the Son of Man would also that uh, would be a sign to them that he um, would not stay in the grave but would be uh, resurrected um, and so throughout the old testament um, we we see pictures and we see this prediction prophecy here that uh, his body would not see corruption, that he would be resurrected of course isaiah 53 you know, will be familiar to most of you concerning his death that uh, he would die um, in Psalm 22. 
would be crucified and suffer the agony of the cross um, and so that he would die on the cross and we know that he died on the cross so even the apostle john who wasn't a doctor but he in his gospel gives an interesting uh witness uh, to the death of christ uh, when he when the soldier pierced the side of jesus and he saw blood and water come out of the wound which is a medical definition of uh, that someone has died uh, because they that, that you would see water and blood coming out and uh, an interesting observation by the apostle john which confirms um, jesus died on that cross uh, he didn't just pass out um, as uh, many in the past have tried to uh, to say so he died according to the scriptures isaiah 53 psalm 22 um, clearly depict uh, that he would die and be buried and uh, he predicted that he would be buried in a in the uh, borrowed tomb and that's exactly exactly what happened um, but if he died and was buried uh, and that's it then there would be no gospel that's why the resurrection i believe is so important uh, the death is important he had to die uh, in the burial um, he was buried um, but if he stayed in the grave then as paul tells us here in corinthians if christ didn't physically rise from the grave then your uh, in verse in chapter 15 he says your faith is in vain um, so he tells us there that without the resurrection we have no hope we have no basis on which to to base our belief that we can be saved and that we will be resurrected um, if christ uh, wasn't raised from the grave so we see that the um, death burial and resurrection have um, been a part of the message of the scriptures both the old and uh, the new testaments um, let's see further here what how paul uh, points out some important truths for us to communicate to others uh, look at verse um, five he says and then he was seen by cephas then by the twelve after that he was seen by over 500 brethren at once of whom the greater part remained to the present but some have fallen asleep after that he was seen by james then all the apostles then last of all he was seen by me also as by one born out of due time for i am the least of the apostles so we see here paul says the resurrection um, is documented in the scriptures but is also um, documented by eyewitnesses um, who are willing we know who are willing to die uh, for what they saw especially the apostles now people will die today for uh, things that they believe to be true uh, people die for uh, things which are not true but they believe they're true and if they truly believe so and um, there are people who are willing to um, put themselves on fire uh, and die in uh, conflicts thinking that they will obtain uh, salvation but they were not there to see the uh, original message given and uh, there when uh, when the events happened uh, and so many of you today would even be willing uh, if needed uh, uh, you would die for your belief that christ rose from the dead uh, but you weren't there uh, you're a witness to it because of what christ has done in your life but uh, you were not actually there when christ was raised from the dead you were relying upon historical um, uh, the historical the scriptures um, and what they teach concerning uh, the resurrection but these uh, witnesses um, knew whether what they were teaching was true or not because they were there when they happened right? and so their willingness to die for something um, that they saw is strong testimony 
that it's true um, because people don't um, people don't die for things that they know are not true and if Jesus really didn't rise from the dead then the apostles Peter and, and uh, the others who were willing to be crucified and 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 um, and martyred uh, for their belief in the resurrection um, pe people just don't die for things they know are untrue none of the uh, apostles recanted uh, of their belief in the resurrection even under threat of um, death uh, so strong witness to the fact of the truths of the resurrection so the scriptures teach it both the old and new testament that we have um, but it's also documented by eyewitnesses um, by peter and the apostles uh, but not just them so we have independent witnesses um, peter and, uh, and the others matthew uh, thomas uh, and some of them especially thomas uh, was a um, uh, he, he wasn't convinced at first, remember. He says, unless I see the prince uh, in, uh, in the, the nail prints in his hands and this, uh, the wound in his side, I will not believe. Uh, and so it's not that they were um, looking for uh, a, a reason to promote a new religion and say, hey, let's, let's promote Jesus as risen. They, um, some of them um, wouldn't believe until they actually saw and remember, Jesus spent 40 days after the resurrection, um, and he gave them many uh, extra uh, revelation and, and uh, documentation and um, proofs that uh, he had truly risen from the dead. And so don't be afraid to use uh, the historical evidence and proofs that... Uh, the scriptures given which uh, people like uh, Habermas and others have um, put in booklet form for us to use uh, giving a reason for the hope uh, that you have as a believer and so the witness of Peter and the Apostles that you have the 500 at one time and uh, Paul says if you don't believe me uh, go ask them uh, because many of them are still here and you could go and interview them and so go and talk to them uh, and even jesus uh, was not afraid to point to the evidence historical events and things that he did while he was here to help people believe and it's not wrong to to look to those things remember the, when john was in prison uh, the uh, john the baptist was in prison and he be, uh, began to have some doubts is it uh, go ask uh, Jesus, are you really the one that uh, we were looking for? And uh, Jesus doesn't tell the uh, messengers, but listen, you tell John, he, he just needs to believe um, uh, what he's been taught. Uh, no, he says, tell John what you've seen. You've seen the dead uh, raised. You've seen the eyes open. You see the lame walking. And so go tell John that. And uh, the good news is being preached in, in, uh, to, the, to the people. And that message is what encouraged and helped John the Baptist uh, uh, when he was in prison, be before he was martyred for, for his faith in Christ. Uh, so many diverse witnesses to, to the resurrection. We need to point that out to people that it was not done in secret it isn't some event that uh, only a few uh, people observed it was there for all um, to uh, see and in fact it happened in the very city where he was opposed uh, you know if christianity isn't true how did it ever get started in the uh, jewish culture there in jerusalem the very heart of judaism uh, and those who had rejected jesus as the messiah um, if he hadn't actually arisen from the dead and, and as you read through the book of acts you, you have so many radical changes taking place in the jewish culture here they are uh, worshiping on on sunday rather than on saturday and you have them doing baptism and communion instead of the passover and so these are great 
um, movements away from their culture and from how they were raised. And what would cause a person to do that? What would cause a whole group, thousands of Jewish people to radically change their behavior? Um, the resurrection is the best explanation of that. And Paul says, go to these people. Uh, he revealed himself to the apostles, uh, to, um, to 500 people at one time. And he says, then also to me, uh, the Apostle Paul, who was uh, an antagonist, one who was opposed to Christianity. And uh, his testimony is that he, he, his life was radically changed by the resurrected Christ. Um, and the resurrection is the only um, satisfactory explanation for the change of the Apostle Paul uh, from a persecutor of Christians to being one of its chief proponents. And James here, who was the early leader of the Jerusalem church, uh, the half-brother of Jesus, um, was not a believer. Uh, what would cause someone who opposed Jesus and ridiculed and mocked him while he was growing up, uh, cause him to become a follower and a leader of the early uh, church and be willing to uh, risk his life uh, for those beliefs? Uh, the only um, explanation is he encountered the living, risen Christ. And that's what Paul says here. He appeared uh, to these people, to James, and also to the Apostle Paul, uh, who then became uh, a preacher of the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. Now, Paul goes on to say give us another reason for why the resurrection is so important. Uh, look at verse, uh, beginning verse 12 of chapter 15 of 1 Corinthians. Now if Christ is preached that he has been raised from the dead, how do some of you say there is no resurrection? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. If Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty. Your faith is empty. And as we mentioned earlier, that uh, our, our message has no power. Uh, no hope if Christ is not raised. Yes, and we are found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he did not raise up, if in fact the dead do not rise. For if the dead do not rise, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile, empty. You, you have no hope uh, of, of being resurrected. Um, you are still in your sins. So, uh, yes, uh, Christ died, was buried, but it's the resurrection that gives us deliverance from and, for, and gives us where he um, sheds his blood and presents it on uh, the altar um, to God. As we read in uh, Hebrews, um, the book of Hebrews documents Christ entering the holiest of all in heaven uh, with his blood. And so, he, if he isn't risen, then we are still in our sins. Uh, unless he was resurrected, um, you, you're just uh, believing a false testimony. You're still, in your, you're still in your sins. Then also, those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. They have no hope. They're not going to be. If Christ wasn't resurrected, then there's no hope for our resurrection. So, wow, what an important doctrine um, taught in the Old and the New Testament. Uh, it's part of the gospel message that we preach. Um, and it must be believed to become a Christian. And it is... Uh, an important truth that helps us stand and defend the Christian faith uh, as believers. And it gives us the hope of uh, our own resurrection. And it also uh, seals our forgiveness, uh, our justification um, from sin. And so without that resurrection, um, that we do, don't have those other doctrines. And so you see how, what, what a foundational doctrine the resurrection is and something that you need to understand and, and be ready to uh, defend. Um, 
here. And he says, it even goes back and is tied with the original creation. Look at, look at verse uh, 20 uh, and following. But now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of death. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. And so Paul ties here the resurrection into the truths of the Old Testament, where because we're in Adam, we are all sinners. Um, when we are in Christ, uh, we can have life through the, the one man Christ. Just like because we were born in Adam, we're born into sin, we can be born uh, into Christ and have the forgiveness of sins. For by one man came death, by one man came the resurrection of the dead. Uh, because Christ did rise from the dead. And so I trust that these uh, few truths and, um, will help you um, and give you a thirst uh, for um, pursuing uh, a further study. Uh, we've only scratched the surface here of the uh, resurrection, but I hope you see just from these few verses how important it is to our faith. Without it, um, we, uh, we are, of all people, Paul says, most miserable. Uh, we, have, we have no hope. Um, but Christ is risen, and we do have the documentation of the scriptures, and we have the truths presented here uh, in 1 Corinthians 15, which would be a good place to start in your own study. Uh, and I trust that uh, that will be an encouragement to you in these days. Um, and that uh, if you haven't trusted uh, in Christ, in the living Savior, that uh, you will do that today. And uh, have that hope of... Uh, being with him, spending eternity with the Lord, being resurrected, being given a new body, uh, a transformed body. Um, for we will see him, Jesus, as he is. And our bodies will be transformed. And I, I trust that you have that hope. Um, Lord bless you in the coming days.